Good evening, everybody. Welcome to round five of this CCRL Elite Tier Season, uh, where we head to the Jeddah Cornish Circuit in Saudi Arabia for what should be another fantastic Grand Prix this. Uh, I tell you what, it feels like it's been a while since I've casted an F1 race. It is... Uh, I, I have missed that last week all three of the leagues that I do, uh, including this one. Uh, that, last, that last time out was at Qatar, and I'm actually kind of upset that I missed that one because Qatar is usually... A very, very fun track to cast, but uh, I had a very good week last time out. We toured every single ballpark in New England, starting in Worcester, Massachusetts, went to Hartford, went to Fenway Park as well, uh, and then back up to uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, and then we'll go over to Portland. Uh, I think this next week, once they're back from All-Star break, it's been a fantastic trip, this, and I, I, I'm, I'm so glad I got to make it happen, but uh, we are here in Jeddah. This track, uh, I, I say this every time we come here, this is the track... Uh, every game this has been put in, every single time a, a series visits this track, this is the most focus-driven racetrack you can actually get. It, it, it's almost like when you go, you know, skateboarding or snowboarding. You got to get that flow correctly the entire time because if you don't, you will make a mistake. And on this track, you will hit something, as uh, and at full speed as well. Seventy-five percent of this track, or more, I believe, is used at full throttle. So, uh, yeah, a lot going on here. I oftentimes, every time we visit this track in any league I go to, I recall probably about three years ago now I had a race in this. This was an F1 21 or 22, and uh, I, I raced a 50% race similar to this. I finished about 8th or ninth, and I had migraines the rest of the night. I was so locked in the entire time that I just couldn't give my brain time to think, and I, I was not feeling very well that night because of this. And this is the virtual world, mind you. I'm not even doing anything. I'm sitting here in a room with a fan you know, go blow it at me, and then I got my steering wheel, and I, I was getting migraines from it, I don't know, I don't know, anyways, it, it appears that Curveball is going to be our first driver out on track, uh, while we have a minute, let's go over our driver and constructor standings, more or less because I don't know what's changed, and neither do you, well, I, I think maybe you had a cast last time out, I don't quite remember, but uh, either way, well, the results last time out from Qatar, it was that of Reimer, who did take the win, it was, uh, uh, DWCJ second, Owa third, Barney fourth, Pontiac Bandit round out the uh, the top five. For the driver standings, as of right now, it is uh, Soxie in the Williams, P1, Reimer second, Daryl th uh, DWCJ third, Cato in fourth, Owa fifth, Bong at sixth, Barney seventh, the Angry Walrus eighth, John the Prince ninth, and Curveball uh, the top ten. And as far as the constructor standings are concerned, Williams atop the table, 214, Mercedes second at 138. That's quite the gap. 38 points behind them is Aston Martin in third. Five points behind them is Renault, uh, sorry, Alpine at 95. It was at one point Renault, I'm sure. Haas in fifth, McLaren sixth, Red Bull seventh. Eighth is uh, the V-Carbs. Ninth is Ferrari, and rounding out the top ten is that of the Saubers. But it is going to be that of Curveball, our first driver on a time lap attempt here on the way into turn one it's a very interesting corner this because especially when you're starting on the grid you have that you have that grid spot on the right side you'll go into the first corner at the disadvantage but if you can hang in there and get to the bottom in the second corner you actually get yourself a fair little advantage until you hit that left hander uh which that wall has been moved inwards uh, by a couple of meters it used to be about a curb a curb length you know more to the inside it's been moved out so uh not much uh corner cutting going on there anymore that's the corner it was turn 10 11 and 12 where uh, if you remember Mick Schumacher had his massive incident back in 2022 exiting the uh, sweeper of turn 13 another one of the banked corners that we've been seeing uh, in form of the one nowadays through turns 16 and 17 only one of the uh, heavier braking zones in this circuit then through the very twisty DRS section of 19, 20, 21, and then you get to this left-handed braking zone at 22. It's a tricky one, this, because that wall on the inside creeps up on you, and then the track limits on the outside. Very difficult to get that one correctly, and you're not going to see a lot of overtakes be made. But where you will see them be made is through here, the spoon section of the track, as I like to call it. Well, it does look like a spoon, doesn't it? Turns 25, 26, and rounding out at uh, the final corner here, turn 27. Sometimes you'll see drivers take that last corner a little bit wider uh, to start to uh, build up some straight line speed sooner. But uh, Curveball, he's going to come to the line here. It's going to be a 135.54. That's a pretty solid lap. Nothing really wrong with that that I could see. Everything looked uh, on pace there. DWCJ 130.007. Uh, That's a pretty solid lap as well, has to be said. It's a half a second advantage 
Uh, back to Bong, who's actually now occupied that second position. We got the Haas of Barney coming across the line. 129, 813. So that's two tenths clear of DWCJ. Uh, the other Haas of Shiesty is actually just beginning one now. John the Prince, 129, 475. He's got Barney by three and a half tenths of a second. Next up, the Aston Martin then of Manson to the line, and he's gone fourth. 13417. DWCJ, not him. It was uh, Trackside's gone fourth. Uh, next up after him, I believe, is the McLaren of Charlie Golf. And across the line he goes, he's going to go ninth. Currently the slowest time of the day. But next up, we do have Reimer, the Mercedes. On an outlap now. About getting ready to start his first time to tent. Let's go along with him here as he. Begins this lap of the Jetta Cornish circuit. So far it is that of John the Prince with the fastest time so far. 129.475. Reimer through the first couple of corners. Uses all the exit that he can. Heading to turn four now. Does well. Rides that inside curb a little bit heavy through turn five. These couple of corners so difficult here. I think they've actually widened it. Uh, out by turns eight and nine just a little bit but if you bottom out on that curb on the outside then you're going to be going for a ride every time Reimer through the hairpin now meanwhile Johnny Damon's gone second two and a half tenths behind John the Prince next up round the line Coma Copa he's going to be on his way in DWCJ on his way in we do have the Haas of Shiesty who has yet to begin one here he's actually going to be pulling in Soxie on an outlap. I'm going to be watching that one quite closely, it has to be said. Aston Martin and Manson. Hemphead on an outlap now. We'll go back along with Reimer, who is making his way through the spoon curve part of the track now. Perhaps did he pick up a slight toe from his teammate at trackside? Possibility there. Exiting turn 27. He's actually taken the exit a little bit more shallow. He's had another foot and a half to play with there on the outside, but he's not chosen to use it. Across the line, 129.566, moves within a tenth of John the Prince, and it now appears that Trackside's going to begin one now. Behind them, it appears that curveball on a flyer now, although it looks as if maybe he's going to make his way into the pit lane. Yep, that's what it seems. Just looking out for the Williams of Soxie here. He's making his way into the spoon curve now. Uh, he's got the McLaren of John the Prince entering the pit lane in front of him. He's got the Sauber of Johnny Damon, who looks to be beginning a, a new one here. Also does John the Prince. But let's go along with this Williams driver, who has really set this grid alight this season. Heading into the first corner now. Takes a lot of the entry curb on the inside of both one and two. You don't usually see too many people use that much curb going through two on the inside like that. Again, those raised curb are difficult to deal with. Through four, he's actually looked slightly slow there, has to be said. Perhaps he'll make it up on the rest of the lap, but uh, Reimer's transition through that four and five looked a lot cleaner. A lot of curb through nine, a lot of curb through ten. Oh, a little bit wiggly exiting turn 13. Still on it quite well here into the braking zone of 16 and 17. All looks right there. No complaints to be had. Tell you what, always, I, I tell you what. That's about the most I've seen a back end of a car get away from somebody and not have that car spin. That was quite a, way, a ways to the side, exiting 22. But he's held this lap together very well, although I don't think it's going to be enough for pole. Johnny Damon goes second, now within three one-hundredths of John the Prince. And Soxy appears. Well, he is going to go across the line here. And wow, even on a lap where I saw a couple of mistakes, 128.817. Uh, 
Well, as it turns out, maybe they just weren't mistakes. Maybe he just knew something that I didn't. It's absolutely a possibility. Johnny Damon, is he on a flyer here? Nope. On a recharge or potentially an in-lap. DWCJ's about to begin one here, currently sixth. Uh, the top second through fourth, actually quite close for the time being. The rest of the midfield from Barney back to Comacopa is that next second of the grid. That's actually not a bad way about it right there. DWCJ making his way through sector one. Again, it, I, I mean, obviously they've moved that barrier on in on the way in through turn four. Perhaps we'll see the Aston Martin of uh, Armanson go through it here in a second. This next corner coming up, that corner there at the end of the straight, that wall used to be another two meters probably inwards there. You could carry a lot more speed. They've, they've moved it in. And it's actually, I, I would think, slowed down some lap times. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't really know, to tell you the truth. In the meantime, it appears that Bong it's actually gone second, has moved within five and a half tenths of a second back to Soxy, who looks as if perhaps is he beginning another one here. Certainly looks as if. We've got seven and a half minutes remaining. Reiner, Reimer's on an outlap now. Barney's gone uh, up to second. Four and a half behind Soxy. That's a good lap there from the Haas. The McLaren of Charlie Gulf has now gone second. He's within a tenth and a half. That's one of the closer we've seen. That's one of the closest we've seen another driver in a qualifying session back to that Williams. That's very good from Charlie Golf. DWCJ looks as if he's just finished one here. He's about eight one thousandths uh, behind that of Johnny Damon. Very close there between those two. So now the top second goes down to P8. As Reimer about to begin another one here. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining. R. Manson making his way through the first couple of corners. Doesn't appear that he's on a flyer. Matter of fact, he's just finished his. But Reimer making his way through sector one now. like he's handled this first sector quite well. Let's see when he gets to the timing line here. I want to say he's at least two tenths quicker. To the line he goes. Ow. Well, actually, four and a half tenths quicker, but Soxie has gone 128.574. Uh, that's put another th probably two and a half tenths of a second back to Charlie Golf. I mean, that is a ridiculously quick time. Uh, but Reimer making his way through sector one now. John the Prince on an outlap as well. I believe he's coming through the spoon curve. Curveball has retired from the session. Has that been done in the pits? I believe it has. Five and a half minutes remaining now. Reimer making his way through the spoon on what seems to be a very good lap, but I'm not too sure he'll be able to improve more than third. Let's see. His exit's 27 now. The recharge is back on and into the pit lane. No, he's going to stay out. And across the line, he will go third. 129-120 improves by four and a half tenths of a second. But I'm wondering, did he just run out of uh, Energy Store? It definitely appears that's the case. And we got five minutes remaining. Aston Martin of R. Manson into the pit lane. We've got next round, I believe, the Williams of Soxie. He's going to be on an in-lap here. Unless, perhaps, is he going to go for another one? as he saved up his entire energy store. Only four other drivers currently out on track, and it does look as if Soxie's going to enter the pit lane here. So Reimer's finished one. Uh, trackside might be on one now. He's making his way through Sector 2, currently 5 one hundredths quicker through 1. But let's see to the timing line. Two tenths quicker for trackside. That's a good time for the, for the, for the time being. 15 one thousandths behind Shiesty. That'll put him roughly in the area of 10th place with Coma Copa, who is two one hundredths back of R. Manson. Uh, the McLaren of John the Prince, I believe, is on a flyer. 
the trackside exiting 27 now recharge light back on he's run out of energy store by the end of the lap to the line he goes up to sixth actually great lap from trackside 129 408 improves by eight tenths of a second John the Prince coming across the line now. I believe this is going to be an improvement from him as well. Line John the Prince only sixth. 129 at 384. Improves by less than a tenth of a second, but will get trackside. Pushes trackside back to row four. And next up, I believe, is going to be Reimer entering the pit lane. Yeah, Reimer on low fuel entering the pit lane now. And I think just the Haas of Barney on an outlap. We do have the Haas of Scheisty as well. Trackside has finished his. We've got the Alpine then of DWCJ. We've got the Ferrari of Bongit, who is not on a flyer. Uh, we've got the Red Bull of Owa uh, on an outlap as well. You're going to start to see the majority of these drivers come back out on track. Only well, six remain in the pit lane, plus the three. I believe I, I believe Sepulveda and Cato may have had qualifying bans. Curveballs just called it a day. Uh, next up, starting a lap here, I believe it is... Well, it's not going to be trackside. He's going to be on his way in. I think it's the Alpine of DWCJ. Two minutes and 15 remain. Let's go along with DW here. Currently ninth place, eight one thousandths behind Johnny Damon, who Johnny Damon uh, making his way through turn four now. Through turns one and two. See, now he has not taken a lot of curve on the inside of two. It's actually slightly hurt him. He's gotten wheel spin coming off of the exit curve of turn two. Through four, he's gone earlier on the brakes. Minute 45 remain through seven, eight, nine, and ten. Looked pretty clean through that section of the track, but I'm not sure. Well, it's a tenth and a half improvement. That's a good place to start. Uh, that'll get him at least the position over Johnny Damon. Perhaps trackside as well if he can finish this lap on a good note. We've got Soxy and Charlie Gulf both out on, uh, out on out laps now. As I believe the, uh, yep, Charlie Gulf actually starting one now. We're going to go along with Charlie Gulf. I'm interested to see his lap. In through turns one and two. A lot of curb on the way in. Through turn one, not a lot through two. Doesn't use any of the exit of two. Through three, now going through four. Breaks about 50 meters away. Tell you what, that was one of the cleaner takings of turn four. That one looked better than what Soxie had to offer, at least. But uh, the timing charts would disagree. Always going to take too much curb there. Exiting turn 11. Across the timing line. Now well, it's an improvement by just under a tenth and a half. DWCJ has gone fourth, improves by three and a half tenths of a second. Uh, just outside of, what is it, two one hundredths back to Reimer, who's on an outlap. 25 seconds remain now. Soxie making his way through the spoon. Charlie Golf going to be making his way to the second DRS section now. And the Sector 2 timing line coming up here momentarily. Three tenths quicker. He's a tenth of a second away from besting Soxie's lap. But unless that Williams driver makes a mistake, invalidates, or hits a wall somewhere, I'm not too sure that uh, he's actually going to be improving. Uh, Reimer did not make it back to the line. Charlie Golf, this is going to be his last attempt. Barney Bong at trackside, Coma Copa, Hemphead, and Angry Walrus did not get an opportunity. Charlie Golf is not happy with his lap, and he comes into the pit lane. Soxie beginning one for himself now. Uh, DWCJ's finished his. John the Prince doesn't appear that he's on another one. Johnny Damon, two and a half tenths of a second quicker through sector two. He's making his way through the spoon curves now. We've got the Haas of Scheisty making his way back to the line, although this is not going to be an improvement from him. So it'll be Johnny Damon and then Manson. The next two drivers up here, Johnny Damon exiting turn 27. Full throttle down and across the line. Johnny Damon up to third, 129-116, improves by... Uh, well over three and a half tenths of a second, but it's R. Manson up next to the line. He goes. He's going to stay 11th.
John the Prince uh, not on another, on another lap, so it's going to be Soxy on pole. Unless perhaps does Owa have some late game heroics on the way. No, he does not. So Soxy is going to be on pole for this Grand Prix. I'm wondering how much he has improved in this final lap. 128.574, the time to beat. And across the line, oh, 128.191, are you serious? I mean, that is a ridiculous time. I, 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 where do they find this guy? I, seriously. Huh. This guy's ridiculous. So I think it is just left John the Prince out on track. He is uh, not on a competitive one here. But Soxie, your pole sitter. The Williams on pole, Charlie Golf second, Johnny Damon third, Reimer fourth, DWCJ fifth, Barney sixth, Bong at seventh, John the Prince eight, John the Prince eighth, ninth track side, tenth Coma Copa, eleventh Manson, twelfth Shiesty, thirteenth Curveball, fourteenth Owa, fifteenth is Hemphead, sixteenth Angry Walrus, and then rounding out the grid without times, uh, Sepulveda and Cato rounding out uh, row number nine, seventeenth and eighteenth. But yet again, this Williams driver of Soxie in a class of his own. It's been fantastic to watch him put down these incredible lap times. And I tell you what, unless Charlie Golf can perform a miracle off the line, we may see this Williams start to pull away. Well, I've just been informed that the formation lap is off. But while we have a minute, be sure to tune in next week when we head to uh, the Circuit Brazil, uh, the Sao Paulo. What the hell is the name of the place? It's uh, Autodromo Jose Carlos Pache for the Redemption Night. Round six of the season. The halfway point should be fantastic. After that, we head to the Red Bull Ring in Spielberg, Austria, and then uh, rounding off this next trio with the Barcelona-Catalonia circuit in Spain. Should be a fantastic couple of races, this, but formation lap is off. Once we get going here, it's going to be go time. Soxy and Charlie Golf on the line, side by side, four lights, five lights are on here under the night sky of Jeddah, Saudi Arabia, and we're underway. Soxy gets a pretty halfway decent start on the medium tires, a little bit of wheel spin, Reimer's trying to go up the middle, can't find the way through. Soxy and Charlie Golf still side by side, Soxy's off the track, I think Charlie Golf may have maybe pushed him wide. Reimer gets up the second in the conundrum, Soxy now has to defend from Johnny Damon as Bonga and Barney side by side through turn four. Uh, they, they're going to figure it out and the Ferrari will get ahead, I think he's probably gone off track but the question is did Charlie Golf force Soxie off track through those first couple of corners oh Charlie Golf's in a bit of an error he's had to go wide and Reimer's trying to follow in pursuit now it's not actually hurt him any uh, Charlie Golf has run clean wide of the circuit but what a conundrum opening a corner couple of corners that and that's what we thought needed to happen for this Williams driver to drop to third was that there needed to be some sort of unbelievable mishap off the line and well it was a dead even getaway Reimer wanted to sneak in between them Charlie Golf would have had that outside line through turn two and I think maybe was their contact with the Williams going through that first corner that would be my only reason to guess as to why something's happened everybody except uh, that of Reimer Walrus and Cato have gone medium Walrus and Reimer have gone soft Cato's gone hard as Walrus and Coma Copa trading positions here, as it looks as if Sepulveda trying to get round the outside of Hemphead does so. Can he get one? He'll get two into turn 27. Sepulveda looks as if he's got in that one, but now it's a side-by-side -side dead heat between Reimer and Charlie Golf into the first corner. Reimer's on the soft tires. He'll have the inside line through turn one. He'll have to send it around the outside. Contact between them as Soxie looks on and hopes that they make a mistake and perhaps he can get his position back. But for the time being, it's still side-by-side -side through turn four. Look at this. They're going to both go off track. Charlie Golf has had to go wide. Soxie's trying to get in behind now, and he's still third behind Reimer and Charlie Golf who battle hard, and I don't think there was any contact between the two. I think they've both just made a hash of that fourth corner. And now Soxie, can he get the run? He's going to try the outside of Charlie Gulf. He'll get the slipstream to Reimer. Reimer's going to box him in here. The McLaren's going to keep the inside line. Soxie's going to have to go the long way around. He's not going to be able to do it for the time being. And still now, as they make their way to turn 16, 16 and 17, Although with DRS activated, it does appear. Oh, that's a big slide for Charlie Golf. It's going to get Soxie as well. And there's a lot of crashing. The will, the Alpine of DWCJ is off. Charlie Golf has lost his front wing. Soxie's dropped down to fourth. And I think he's got wing damage as well. 
Yeah, he's missing a lot on the left front side. All started with a massive shake then from Charlie Golf, which unfortunately collected DWCJ, and we got a virtual safety car out on track. Well, that will promote Johnny Damon to second, bong it to third. Back to green flag racing here. Soxie's going to have to come in and replace that front wing. The question now, trackside within position to get to Barney here, perhaps. Is he going to look for the inside? I don't quite think he's going to be close enough uh, for the time being. Barney's now picked up three seconds for multiple warnings. Uh, bong it up four positions. Trackside up four. Manson up five. Tries to get five. Angry Walrus and Cato both up eight. It's been a fantastic opening couple of laps for those two. And we still got some great racing going on here. And it has to be said, Soxie has lost a lot of positions, but credit where it's due. He was able to get that car back down quick enough to not DNF then, because Charlie Golf lost that car clean in front of him. Nothing that uh, Soxie would have been able to do but try to slow down and hope to not hit him that hard, and that's exactly what he's done. He's kept himself alive for at least another, at least another day here. Oh, it appears Trackside's had an error somewhere along the line. Exiting 16 and 17, he's definitely gone off track. He's not hit anything by the looks of it. So the top three now within a second and a half of each other. Bong it following Damon, following Reimer. Johnny Damon may have a look here on the Mercedes on the way into 27. No, he's tucked back in line. He'll have DRS, he'll choose to have DRS going down the pit straight. As they exit turn 27 now. It's an even getaway between the two, but I'm looking at Bonget here. He's gonna have to try it. He's gonna go down the inside. Johnny Damon's gonna go down the inside. And the Sauber looks like he may get the position. Oh, there's contact between the two. And still side by side now. Bonget following in behind. Slightly uncharacteristic of Reimer to see this much uh, aggression by him and trying to hold on to these positions irregardless of the potential damage that could be caused. Tell you what, the Ferrari of Bong, it looks to be struggling. Perhaps is that car more suited for the straight line speed? Because through that section of the track, we did look slightly slower. Johnny Damon, three-tenths of a second, back to Reimer, bong it, not all that far behind either. Still the battle for the top three. I think uh, perhaps did Damon hit the wall there on the entry to 16. Reimer has not gotten away well exiting that corner. Johnny Damon with DRS is going to have a look through for 22. This is a rough one here, hopefully they can settle it. Johnny Damon does outbreak Reimer and he's going to stay on track as well. I think though that's going to allow, is Reimer going to have DRS? Yes, he does. Bong, it's going to have to try to go around the outside here. Reimer's going to try it. Also on the outside, it's going to be three abreast heading into 17. No. Reimer and Bong, it both tucked back in line here, but this has allowed Barney into the picture now. Walrus and Shiesty battling it out, but for the time being, still the top three. Reimer's going to try the outside of Johnny Damon. He's got it easily. Bong, it's going to have to try to send it to the inside through turn one, and I think he's going to get it. On the Aston Martin here, no weak, uh, not the Aston Martin, the Sauber, either way. Can't quite do it, but now Barney, oh, that was nearly, that was nearly going to be a massive accident. A lot of wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact between Bonget and Barney going through that one. Somehow they've kept it clean and we keep going. Curveball has gotten around Cato uh, through the first couple of corners. Shiesty and Angry Walrus battling it out, but I think Sepulveda may have had some sort of error going through the first corner. Either way, he's sorted it out. But the battle for the top three now belongs to four drivers in question. Barney with a three-second penalty. Half a second behind Bongit. Half a second behind Damon. Four-tenths of a second behind Reimer. As now DRS is going to be activated again. The question is, well, I tell you what, Barney's going to have a good look here on Bongit for that third spot. Uh, I don't think he's going to have it into the corner this time, but Damon's going to try it on the inside through 22. Not going to happen now. That would have been risky. Some incredible racing we're seeing here. As through the spoon curve they go, Johnny, Johnny Damon's gonna defend high, Bungett's gonna go low, and the Ferrari's gonna take the second spot. Does he try 
to seal the deal on Reimer as well. Still to the outside is Johnny Damon. Can't get it done, Bong. It's going to have to look to the back end of Reimer now. But now the question is, who's going to have the advantage going into the first corner? As Reimer leads, Johnny Damon to the inside of Bongit. Barney looks on and doesn't quite have the ability to make a move on Bongit. Although now, Bongit's going to try to stick it to the inside. Barney's going to have to send it around the outside. And I think he's done that. Yes, Barney has made the move through turn three. And through turn four, they go. Reimer still first. Johnny Damon still second. But Barney is taking the third spot despite his three-second time penalty. What an incredible couple of opening laps here, and I tell you what, Soxie might be struggling here, although he's on the hard tire. I tell you what, that's a lock up there for Soxie, still six and a half seconds behind Sepulveda. Slightly odd to see him that far back. Of course, it was, I think, kind of out of his, out of his control. I don't know. But either way, in the proceedings, Charlie Golf has been relegated to the 13th. And so now the battle once again for the lead. Johnny Damon, who really wants this move into 22 for some reason. I, I, I don't really know. He's kind of looked, had a look there a couple of times. He's not going to make it happen, mostly because there's not enough room. But here they go now. DRS train activated. Johnny Damon's going to have an advantage over Reimer here. Reimer's going to defend the inside. You're going to make Johnny Damon go the long way round. Barney's going to try to go the inside of Reimer. Not going to make it happen. Reimer's going to outbreak. Johnny Damon, who's going to stick into the outside. Bongit still watches on and hopes a mistake is made so that he can capitalize. But Reimer's going to defend way down to the inside. He's going to take the entirety of the white line with him. Johnny Damon's going to go around the outside. He's going to take the top spot into the first corner. Bongit not close enough to make a move on Barney, but Barney may have a look here at Reimer. Nah, I don't think he's close enough for the time being. Yeah, and I'm expecting Reimer's soft tires to start to go off here. Oh, there it is. Well, I don't know. Has he been, has he had contact from behind? That was a really odd error from Reimer. Yeah, he must have been punted because there's there's not really a chance like that. You're going to go straight on at that corner like that. If it was a lockup, at least he would have kind of initiated the turn-in phase, but it's not that heavy of a braking zone. I think he's been properly booted in the rear as Reimer. Down to fourth. No damage on Barney's Haas. Uh, no apparent damage on Bong. It's Ferrari. Went out of the inside of Reimer's R. Manson. DRS is going to be activated here side by side. Trackside looking to get around his teammate as well. This is only going to end well. Trackside does actually get around Reimer quite cleanly. Sorry, but you're never going to get used to seeing two Mercedes going side by side. Even if Barcelona 2016 was eight years ago, you're not, you, 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 that's never going to look good. <laughs> While we're getting around Shiesty as it turns out. There goes Barney's not quite going to have a look to the inside of Damon this time through one. But trackside to the inside of Armanson now. Yep, he's going to get him there. Yeah, good move for Trackside, who makes himself uh, up to fourth. Good race so far from Trackside. Hopefully he can keep it together. Either way for Manson, he's up six. Angry Walrus up nine. Oh, and look at this. Johnny Damon's gone off somewhere along the line. He's crashed the car. It's in the middle of the circuit. Barney's got a 10-second penalty for the collision with Johnny Damon. As the Haas leaves the scene of the crime... With, an, with the end plate missing on the right side, something dreadfully wrong has gone on then, as it means the end of Johnny Damon's race. And remember last time around we were talking about, or was it two laps ago, that was it perhaps Barney that got into the back end of Reimer through that same section of the track. I'm now going to begin doing some Discord investigating here because I can guarantee... That we're going to have some good old-fashioned conversations in said Discord. No, I think... Has he lost it on his own? I think Johnny Damon may have lost that on his own. He's talking about the curbs on the outside, which we talked about in the qualifying session. Maybe has he done it by himself?
Well, now we see cars enter the pit lane. Bongit will be in first. We're assuming the hard tire for everybody involved here. But a very strange error from Johnny Damon. I think perhaps the damage we do see from the Haas of Barney. Although he's got 10 seconds of penalty, he'll at least be able to serve five of it per pit stop. Unless he's served the whole 10. No, surely he's not served the whole 10. Yes, he has. Wow, okay. I didn't know you could serve tenors now. Well, safety car's out on track. Kato is going to be scored the leader here. I'll step aside until we sort this out. But goodness me, that's going to promote Soxie back to fifth. Huh. What a race we have on our hands. And so the safety car will be in this time by... Kato is in the lead of the Grand Prix. Nine lap old hard tires. He should be able to get at least another five laps out of, out of those, I would guess, until he makes the move to either the mediums or the softs. Bong it, I would say, is the next best driver on uh, fresh hard tires as well as trackside. Oh, but guess who? Soxy, back into the top four. Seven lap old hards. He still has, he's actually, now that I think of it, he has fulfilled his mandatory pit stop. Reimer to 5th, Walrus to 6th, Barney to 7th. He's served 10 of his accumulated 13-second penalties, and we are back under green flag racing conditions. Cato leads them into the first corner. Bong it follows behind. Oh, but look at this. Soxie already on trackside. He's going to have to try to di dive it down to the inside. Trackside actually defends very well that time, and Reimer's going to try the inside on Soxie. There he goes. The Mercedes to the inside. Will he be able to stick it around the outside going through turn four? It's going to be a hell of a task, but if he can do it, it'll be an overtake for the ages. And no, three of the top four cars have to go off track. And Reimer's now going to lose position to Angry Walrus, who slips it up the inside going through turn five and six. Wow, and Reimer, after trying it gutsy, actually loses the position then. That part I didn't expect, but now it's track side up to second. Gets down to the inside of Bungit. It is now eight tenths of a second behind. As or as Bong had either made a mistake or has he been tapped by Soxie? I'm not too sure, but he's gone way up the track. Soxie gets third. Walrus uh, wanted to initially have a peek at Bong. It couldn't get it done. Charlie Golf gets around Barney. Oh, I think Reimer may have hit the wall there going into turn 16 and 17. It was a noticeable plume of smoke. But for the time being, still as they file through the DRS section, trackside wants it to the inside of Kato. He can't quite get it done this time. But as they go now through 22, they're, again, they're not going to have DRS until next time by. But I think if Trackside gets a good enough run here, he may very well have a look. He's going to have to go down to the inside. That's about the easier way. Kato chooses to defend high. Maybe is he going to allow his teammate to get into the mix of this? Either way, Trackside, your new leader here in Jeddah. And on fresh hard tires as well, that is good scenario for Trackside who now, as the Williams drivers looks to swap positions here, Soxie makes his way up to second. Quite a run. He's getting out of the final corner as well. He's going to have to try the outside line. Trackside leads the lap, but for how long? Soxie's going to have to go uh, into the first corner behind. Trackside's going to push up the circuit here. Soxie still files in behind, and for the time being, Trackside still has the advantage. But now, as they go through turn four, whoever makes that first mistake is going to really come out the loser of this battle. We'll have to wait and see. Trackside does get away better out of turn four and five. And now leads Soxie by six tenths of a second. His teammate of Kato behind is going to be looking to defend like hell. Back to Angry Walrus. Williams still looking for a double podium here. The uh, the two drivers look, work together very well. We'll have to wait and see. Kato now is a second behind to Soxie. Good defending, I would assume, is going to be on the way. Angry Walrus will have DRS, but Kato is going to defend uh, like the Great Wall of... Well, Britain doesn't have a Great Wall, does it? Anyways... I don't even know where I'm going anymore. The track, the, the race is so hectic, I'm losing my words. Anyway, seven tenths of a second is the gap. Soxie has DRS, but he's not necessarily closing in trackside at a rate that could be dangerous. Tra Angry Walrus will get around Kato on his first attempt with DRS, however. As they go now through the spoon sections of the track, Soxie is behind by five and a half tenths of a second, but DRS is going to be in his favor here. He's going to close in quite a little bit here. As they get into turn 27, I would assume trackside is probably going to lose the lead this time in towards turn one unless if he gets that much better of an exit which no it's about even which uh, an even exit out of the final corner with DRS next up it makes the advantage 
go to the driver of the Williams Sox. He does go to the right side of the circuit and gets the lead. Trackside still trying to hang it in there on the inside. A little bit of contact being made. Nothing worth complaining about there. Soxy and the Williams, your leader. And he's fulfilled his mandatory pit stop. 10 laps to go in a couple of laps time. I would expect that Williams might just take off from here. Oh, big slide from Bongit. Does he hold it together? Well, he does. That's going to make Charlie Gulf have to avert and go wide. Reimer's going to get up to fifth. Uh, Bongit's actually going to fall down to tenth as Comacopa goes around the outside. Sepulveda down to the inside. And I'm thinking something is happening here with Bongit. He's, he's either hit something and has lost some downforce. I don't know. Remember, we were talking about Bongit earlier, and we thought that that car was going to be better in the straight line. Didn't really take the first sectors that well. Lots of understeer through the first sectors of the track is kind of what we thought. Uh, was going on with Bong, and it appears to be the case. Meanwhile, Angry Walrus has gotten around trackside, uh, but the problem is that Walrus is not necessarily closing in on Soxie. I mean, he is, microscopically, about 15 one-thousandths of a second per second at the moment. He's not even going to have DRS to Soxie here. That might be the saving factor. I'm not sure Soxie can really pull away uh, w w without DRS. That's the big question on my mind got now oh we've got a virtual safety car what's happened here oh hemp has gone off at turn 22 and he's lost the entirety of the front wing that's uh well that's exactly why we've got this virtual safety car uh but soxy back in the lead of the grand prix uh it looks as if Cato's gonna enter the pit lane here perhaps fitting the medium tires perhaps the softs if he can feels if he feels he can take them that long And it is going to be the medium tires for the Williams here. Hemp head on his way in as well, naturally. It's a Coma Copa, as well as Angry Walrus. Drive through penalties for speeding under the virtual safety car. That is a massive development there. That'll promote trackside to the second position once Walrus serves his penalty, although does trackside allow Reimer past either that or does either one of the Mercedes defend and keep Charlie Golf off the podium here? It could very well be the case. Yeah, I'm not too sure what the plan of attack is here, but for the time being, trackside's going to have DRS on Angry Walrus. I don't quite think uh, he's actually going to get close enough to make something happen. Although, what I will say is this. Soxie's actually lost about six-tenths of a second somewhere along the line. That's going to allow uh, Angry Walrus to have DRS back to the Mercedes here. Uh, Williams. Williams Mercedes, you know what I mean. I don't quite think he's going to be close enough to make a move. Matter of fact, he's going to want to serve that drive through penalty. But that is allowing trackside into the picture here. And Walrus is staying out. Walrus is saying, uh, you know, he's going to try for this position. Let's see what happens. As Charlie Golf's going to get down to the, uh, actually around the right side of Reimer, Barney's going to look to do the same, and I think he will. He's going to have to go the long way around the first corner, but he'll have the preferred line through the second corner. Let's see, is Reimer going to get better acceleration to the outside? Yes, he does. So Reimer keeps fifth, but Charlie Golf goes up to fourth. And now the top two drivers within eight tenths of a second of each other. This time by will be ten laps to go. For the time being, this will allow Trackside to get to that second position. Oh, they've both gone off track there. Trackside now is going to look to get around Walrus. Walrus is actually going to defend. Well, that's got to be infuriating for Trackside, who knows for the time being he's got pace to, I think, at least challenge Soxie with the aid of DRS, but Walrus is not letting him have it. Well, that would be a massive, massive argument then from Trackside. Oh, and Trackside, mistake coming out of 16 and 17. And now Charlie Golf's going to get the third position. Well, I think if Trackside... Oh, Reimer's lost a bit of the front wing there. Yeah, can we see that again? He's lost the end plate on the right front side. What's happened to Reimer? Either way, Angry Walrus round the outside of Soxie here. Trackside's going to get back around Charlie Gulf, but now a second and a half behind this battle for the lead here. He won't have DRS unless, is he close enough? No, he's going to miss it, I think, by about three one hundredths of a second. No DRS for the Mercedes at Trackside, but going down the pit straight, Soxie's going to have to try to the inside here. No, Walrus is going to outbreak him. Ten laps to go. This is allowing Trackside back into the mix here. 
Charlie Golf in the picture as well. So is Barney, despite having three seconds of penalty. Reimer's actually getting back to this, but he's got that wing damage. I wouldn't expect him to play too much of a part in this. Sepulveda and Owa side by side through four. And, oh, Owa's going to go around. And I think at least he's, well, he's lost the front wing. That may at least be the virtual safety car. No, maybe not. He's absolutely lost the front wing, but no virtual safety car, says race control. Through the sweeping left-hander of turn 13, they go. Walrus ahead of Soxie by eight and a half tenths of a second. This will allow Trackside into the DRS window between these two. This is where Trackside made the mistake last time round, and I think perhaps as he got in a way slightly better than Soxie that time, he'll have DRS. He won't get it uh, any sort of move this time. Going in through turn 22, he'll have to wait uh, through turn 27, potentially, but maybe now. Do we see Charlie Gulf? Gulf's actually going to go wide through 22. Entering the spoon now. Barney's going to have a fair look at this, but Trackside versus Soxy here. This is going to be the battle for what could eventually be the win of the Grand Prix. Charlie Gulf in on this as well. Barney gets dangerously close to the back end of Charlie Gulf. We got a five way battle. Well, four way, really, when you think about it. No, because Reimer's in this too. We got a five way battle for the win of the Grand Prix. Walrus is serving his drive through. Trackside, does he have a look? He's not quite close enough. Barney now to the inside of Charlie Gulf. It's going to make Charlie Gulf go to the inside through two. Is Barney going to switch back to the inside? No, he doesn't. He'll keep his line. Six and a half tenths of a second separate Charlie Gulf from Trackside, but the big battle is, tra is Trackside to Soxie, and I think as Trackside, well, he's definitely hit the wall going through four. Doesn't appear to lose any of the front wing, but Trackside, oh, I tell you what, he's doing quite well here. Let's hope he stays with it. Going through nine, 10, 11, and 12. Looks even, Steven, between the two. Once DRS comes into play, we've got ourselves one hell of a battle here. Bong at a three second penalty for multiple warnings. Down in ninth place, that'll make him lose at least two positions at the end of it. But Soxie leads them through 16 and 17. A little bit of slippage there from trackside. Nothing worth complaining about. He'll have DRS activated here, but he's not going to be close enough to make something happen. No, not this time. But if he can at least get himself a good enough look to the back end of Soxie as they make their way through the spoon curve, that's going to be mega for trackside. Soxie, I don't think he's actually taken that as well as he usually does. DRS is going to be activated here for trackside using actually saving his battery quite well just the use of the drs now for trackside he's going to send it around the outside is he going to be able to get it he'll at least have a little bit of acceleration he won't have drs because i think he was ahead yep he was ahead of soxy as they exited 22nd drs to the aid of the williams here but reimer now getting around charlie golf barney getting down to the inside of charlie golf as well Actually, as it turns out, Barney's decided to not send it that time. Charlie Gulf has outbraked him quite well. This is a hugely entertaining race as we have a Mercedes two and three, followed by a McLaren in fourth, a Haas in fifth for the time being, and the McLaren of John the Prince in sixth, the Haas in seventh, Bong at the Ferrari eighth, Sepulveda ninth, and tenth is R. Manson. But still the battle between the top five. And it wouldn't surprise me if we see another three-second penalty to somebody on the way. As Angry Walrus, well, there it is for him, three-second penalty. We've got Charlie Golf four-tenths of a second away. Charlie Golf sliding a little bit there through 16 and 17. That's not going to help him. But what is is this. With Even without the aid of DRS, trackside really close to Soxie here. He's going to try it on the inside, going through 22. Contact being made. Trackside's going to have to outbreak him on the inside. Soxie goes off the track. I think the Williams is going to rejoin, but I think maybe was that on his own error. It looked as if trackside had left him enough room on the inside. Reimer's going to get around Soxie here. And then some Mercedes 1 and 2, but Soxie does not have DRS. Reimer's still going to try it. The Williams is going to try to out outbreak him on the outside here and it's not quite going to happen. Reimer's going to defend a hell of a lot here for Trackside, but they're both going to have DRS. Trackside really in a bit of a hole here. Reimer to the inside. Trackside's going to defend high. That's going to force Soxie low, and Reimer's going to take the lead of the Grand Prix. And look at this. Oh, I think Reimer may have almost made a hash. It turns one and two. That was very close. Barney's going to get, get around Charlie Gulf. I wouldn't be surprised if we see some sort of race altering crash as Soxie loses the traction coming out of four. He'll drop all the way to third now as Barney's going to get around him through five, six, seven, and eight. 
And Sox is going to go off the track once more. This is going to open the door for Charlie Gulf through 10, 11, and 12. Can't quite do it. Not quite yet. But Reimer has the lead. Eight tenths of a second. Behind him is his teammate at trackside. Who doesn't really have to worry about Barney. Who's got three seconds of penalty. As long as Barney defends like he's going to fight for that third position. He'll keep Soxie behind. Soxie will at least finish third. But a 1-2 for Mercedes would be outstanding. And now as it is, Barney with DRS back to trackside. Trackside's got DRS to his teammate, but he's not quite closing in at a rate to threaten Reimer here. Soxie, I think, has gone slightly wide going out of 22. Maybe has that hurt him? Could that potentially open the door for Charlie Gulf? Going down into turn 27, Reimer is going to have to... Uh, sorry, Trackside's going to force Barney the long way around. I think that may help him. Oh, Trackside, no, he's lost it on his own. Charlie Gulf, I think, has he gone into the pit lane? Yes, he has. Trackside falls to fourth. I'm hoping he's not injured his car. It doesn't appear that he's missing any front wing. But he's got to be absolutely kicking himself right now. From second down to fourth. And he's a second and a half behind Soxie. He's got to reclaim DRS range. For the time being, he's at least still looking for a podium. That's in play. As Barney in second has a three-second penalty. I think, for the time being, yet trackside is about seven-tenths of a second. Probably about a full second, really, in the good. To be able to still finish on the podium. But trackside, again, putting together some good pace here. He's really starting to reel in that Williams of Soxie. He's not quite challenging him. He's not going to have DRS this time. As Soxie's going to have DRS to Barney ahead. But DRS activated for the Williams. This time by will be five laps to go. 21, 2, 3, 4, and 5. And let me tell you, it's not over yet. Barney now going to try the outside on Reimer. Reimer's defended that inside, but Barney with the three-second penalty has nothing to lose. He's going to have to absolutely gun it into that 27th corner and does but Reimer's going to have the advantage on the way out with DRS Soxie's actually gone a little bit wide exiting turn 27 there Reimer's going to retake the inside and the lead of the Grand Prix Soxie may be under pressure from trackside in a little bit in a minute but not yet here Barney's going to have to stick to the right side here Reimer's going to get in front of him quite well that will open the door for Soxie trackside back into this picture potentially for the podium oh he's gotten into Soxie and into the wall still somehow has not lost any front wing that front wing made of absolute uh, titanium obsidian I don't even know how the hell has he hit that and kept his front wing it's not like he's just grazed it no he's gone into that barrier and now, still potentially, has the ability to fight Soxie here for that third, eventually second spot. Reimer leads the queue, going down the uh, snaking DRS section through sector two. Leads Barney by two and a half tenths of a second. Barney may have a look here through 22. No, I, 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 that was going to be quite, quite careless if he did send it like that. But this has allowed Soxie back into the mix here. Trackside a little bit further behind, but he'll have DRS at the very least as the train makes their way into turn 27. Barney not going to send it on Reimer this time. He's going to choose the comfort of having DRS. Down the pit straight they go. Four laps to go this time by. Reimer's going to defend the inside. He'll send Barney the long way around. Soxie down to the inside. Double overtake for the lead of the Grand Prix. And he's done it. Soxie back to the lead. But Barney's still to the inside. But now Reimer to the inside of Barney, and he's done it. And how the hell is Reimer doing this good, missing the end plate on the right front side? That doesn't make any sense to me, but he has done brilliantly, tell you the truth. This is still allowing trackside into this mix, potentially for the podium spot. All he's got to do is keep it together cleanly, and he'll have at least third. But still, Reimer back to Soxie, and now potentially does Soxie start to pull away as Reimer missing the end plate on the right front side will certainly hinder 
not only his breaking performance, but his downforce as well, and he's already outside of a second. Oh no! And a safety car on track! That was at least the second time, third time, we saw Trackside lose it. You know, not fully like that, but definitely lose the car a little bit going through 16 and 17. Oh my God. You, you, you can't make this up. You just can't. Well, this is interesting. What does Soxie decide to do? Soxie's gonna pit for the softs here. Reimer is gonna stay out on track. Barney's gonna stay out as well. It's gonna be up to John the Prince. And I think potentially does John the Prince. Yeah, John the Prince staying out. Soxy had already stopped for his mandatory tire. This is purely strategical. Soft tires falls down to fifth. Now sixth with Shiesty Curveball. Down to seventh. Potentially down to eighth is Charlie Gulf coming around. Wow. Welcome to CCRL Elite Tier. So we're gonna get back to green flag racing here with maybe two laps to go. Reimer in the lead of this race with a broken front wing. Barney second with a three second time penalty. John the Prince is back in this. Sepulveda up 13 positions. A lot of drivers pitting for the softs. Safety car in this lap. So now the question is, will Reimer be able to hold off Barney? Will Barney be able to hold off John the Prince? John the Prince on the medium tires, albeit 15 laps old, looks pretty good here. 15 lap old medium tires versus a guy on 14 lap old hards with a three second penalty, as well as the leader of the Grand Prix with a broken frickin' wing. I don't even know what's gonna happen here. John the Prince immediately tries the inside of Barney, no guts. DRS will be activated next time by. We'll get the one lap of DRS. Soxy up to six, the long way around versus Curveball. Soxy's gonna have to tackle Shiesty next. Shiesty's gone a little bit slow, going through four. Look at Soxy up to fifth already. As Shiesty missing a bit of the front wing, he's got Sepulveda in his way next. Sepulveda, I think he's had it made a hash of turn 11 and 12. Kato's picked up three seconds of penalty, but Soxy's gonna go around the outside versus Sepulveda. Oh, Sepulveda's gonna get him way wide off the track. Not good looks there, but Soxy does get around Sepulveda, I think for the time being the fourth. Second and a half behind John the Prince. A podium is still in reach for Soxy. Reimer, a second and a half ahead of, ahead of Barney here. Oh, Barney will have to hold off John the Prince. Two tenths of a second between these two. Barney's going to go wide through turn 22. I think may allow John the Prince into this picture. Soxy a second and a half behind. But through turn 27 for the penultimate time. Coming to the white flag, the final lap of this Grand Prix. Soxy, I think, has made a mistake somewhere along the line. 
Not too sure. John the Prince now. Final lap of the Grand Prix underway. DRS will be activated as they as they go through the uh, Sector 2 DRS section. Reimer only a half a second ahead of Barney here. Of course, Reimer in the hot seat right now because he got uh, he's got the lead and Barney has a three-second penalty behind him. John the Prince has to get around Barney here. Soxie now within eight tenths of a second of John the Prince. Coma Copa three second penalty for multiple warnings. The uh, Ferrari of Hemp Heads lost it out of the final corner. He's retired on track. Big slide then from Soxie. Reimer ahead of the queue here in towards turn 13 for the final time as a second and a half advantage over Barney. John the Prince trying to close in, but Soxie even more in position. Still trying to hunt down the back of the McLaren here. They'll have DRS this time. Barney won't have it to Reimer. They better hope for a big mistake from Reimer here. Soxie going through the DRS section. He's gonna hold back and allow John the Prince to attack Barney for the time being. Barney's picked up three seconds of multiple warnings. That goes, that, that'll be it for his opportunity at a podium. John the Prince gonna go around the outside. Barney down to the inside. He didn't hear no bell. Soxie to second place. And look at this, Soxie to the back of Reimer. I think he may have DRS, he may have battery as well. Are you kidding me? It's gonna come down to the line? Are you serious? At a time where you think he's got a standing eight count, he goes and wins the damn thing. Have you ever seen a finish better than that? Soxy the Williams, your winner. You gotta be fucking kidding me, that's the best race I've ever seen. Bottom line. You are never gonna see anything like that ever again. Soxie wins by less than a tenth of a second over Reimer. John the Prince third, Sepulveda fourth, Scheiste fifth, Manson sixth. Good result for the Aston Martin team, sixth and seventh. Barney eighth, Curveball ninth, Comacopa tenth, Cato eleventh, Owa twelfth, thirteenth, Bongett, fourteenth, Charlie Gull, fifteenth, Hemphead, sixteenth, Trackside, seventeenth, Johnny Damon. Rounding out the grade eighteenth is DWCJ. Well, usually the redemption nights are quite good. Nothing's going to beat that. Sorry, it has to be said. Still tune in next week, but God almighty. Speechless after that one.